Hello and welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shoman. We're at the Jodhpur Air Force Base. It is a red letter day for the Indian Air Force with the light combat helicopter. The helicopter that you see behind me being inducted into the IAF. This is very much the future as far as attack helicopters are concerned in the Indian Air Force. Throughout this program, we're going to be talking about the actual induction of the helicopters, the capabilities of the helicopters. We'll be speaking to the squadron commander. We'll be speaking to young war fighters of the Indian Air Force, the men who actually fly this machine. And we're going to be talking a great deal about Atma Nirbhakta because in as much as some may believe it is a rhetoric it is a reality when it comes to several areas of Indian defense, not least of all, the manufacture, the design of this helicopter. A multi-faith ceremony to induct India's light combat helicopter, which has now been named Prachand, which means fierce. Weapons hot. Weapons hot. Fire. Battle destroyed. Returning home. The Pratan now enters service with 143 helicopter unit in Jodhpur and is being simultaneously inducted into the army. Of the 15 initial choppers ordered, 10 are being inducted into the IAF, 5 go to the army. The total cost 3,887 crores. Both services are expected to induct upwards of 50 Pratant helicopters each. Later, the minister flew on the Prachan. He's flown on the Indian Air Force's Sukhoi 30s earlier. For the Jodhpur based squadron inducting the chopper today is a huge day, a chance to fly a world class hunter killer chopper. And we've spoken uh, about high altitudes, but this is equally adept at flying less than treetop height as well, right? In the desert where there are no trees. As I told you, this aircraft is highly maneuverable. It, it, it responds to the pilot input instantaneously. And because of that, we can fly it as low as possible in bad weather conditions, uh, in, in, in day and night, and all kinds of terrain. It's beautiful in terms of uh, maneuverability. The Prachand weighs 5.8 tons. It can fly at altitudes in excess of 16,000 feet in Ladakh. It's armed with missiles, rockets, and a cannon. Developed after the Kargil War, when the existing choppers at the time were unable to carry out their high altitude missions, the Prachand has a key role to play in Ladakh against Chinese threats. The engine, of course, uh, it's co-developed. It's called the Shakti. Variants of this engine actually do service on the advanced uh, light helicopter as well. Tell us about the engine. How does it work well with this airframe? As far as the design of the engine is concerned, it is a very powerful engine uh, wherein it has been designed to match the uh, characteristics of the uh, transmission system and it gives us the option to uh, you know, fly the machine at the highest peaks of the uh, Himalayas. So that is what it has been made uh, in the country itself to you know, operate in the Himalaya regions and operate at the highest peaks. So as far as the buzz in this squadron is concerned, it is like we uh, are working day and night and still we are fresh and we are uh, excited and uh, you know we have that enthusiasm always there uh, so we are working towards operationalizing the platform at the earliest for that we have got pilots from different streams uh, so we have you know a varied experience in our kitty that we are utilizing well so that is the kind That's of buzz is, is yeah, going on and, and uh, it is uh, definitely a proud uh, privilege for all of us to be a part of this elite group of the lch uh, trailblazers and uh, we are all honored to have been uh, chosen to shoulder this responsibility and uh, definitely it will be our uh, sincere endeavor to perform to the best of our uh, ability to operationalize uh, this uh, state of the art machine, uh, the fleet to its full uh, capacity and capability at the earliest. So we have the Tejas for the fighter aircraft, Prachand for um, the light combat helicopter that you can see uh, behind me now. 
A handful of these are being inducted into the Indian Air Force. In the first allotment, the uh, government had sanctioned 15 helicopters, 10 for the Air Force, 5 for the Indian Army. These are progressively entering both services. Ultimately, we expect the Army to operate as many as 95, perhaps approximately 65 for the Indian Air Force. Vishnu Shom for NDTV. Well, joining us now, uh, Group Captain Deepak Vishnoi, he's the commanding officer of this helicopter unit. Thanks so very much for being with us. It's a matter of immense pride for you. Um, how does the LCH fly, sir? What is it like to fly this indig Indian indigenous helicopter? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm proud to be the uh, pilot, the first pilot uh, flying this helicopter, uh, purely indigenously developed. Yeah. And when we talk about the flying characteristics, yeah. uh, characteristics yeah. of this uh, aircraft, yeah. because of the rigid rotors, the composites, the agility of this helicopter is uh, very nice. Because oh. of it, uh, and the human machine interface in this helicopter has been made so nice that for a pilot, it, it, it's a dream aircraft to fly. And so it's extremely agile, and I think that's uh, one of the key design features, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And the need for this helicopter was spelled out after the Cargill War, because we needed something to be able to fly in the mountains. How, does, how is that a key design feature? That, uh, we realized in 1999 that uh, we did not have any capability that time uh, in terms of attack helicopters to fly at the altitude of Siachen. And once we looked, looked uh, elsewhere, we could not find a machine which could do the requirement, required job at that altitude. Right. So that's how the, the story of development started. And Indian Air Force and HAL came together. We, we, we researched. And over the period of last 15 years, we made a lot of amendments, a lot of trials at high altitudes, high temperatures. And we developed certain key technologies like uh, how to use composites, the rigid rotors, the transmission system, the AFM of the helicopter to make it as light as possible, yet main, uh, retaining its agility, the uh, maneuverability, and also the uh, flying characteristics which uh, uh, make the uh, mission simple for a pilot to fly. The man mission inter interface, in other words, the glass glass cockpit with the multifunction displays, um, and you know, mated to a helmet mounted side, that's all been done to an Indian specification. And I think that's interesting and important because this is not something you've imported from outside in terms of the design. It's exactly what we in India want for our pilots. That's also key, right? It's a key part of Atma Nirbharta to design something the way we want it. See, as you said about Atma Nirbharta, I feel that the requirement itself was Atma Nirbharta, nobody else has had this requirement, this stringent operational requirements. So the genesis and subsequently the, uh, as you said, the uh, build up of critical technologies which is uh, unique, which we have developed in terms of uh, operating this helicopter at such high altitude with such uh, good uh, systems, modern systems, the night vision goggles, the helmet mounted displays and uh, the structures. In all respects, I would say uh, the key milestone for India to have developed such a beautiful uh, machine and we are proud of it. You know, the, these sensors are, are fully integrated and integration has been a key part of the development. Um, how, how has that really worked out, integration? Because this involves integration of various systems and various sensors, not just their design but actual integration. So tell us a little bit about the process of integration which we've seen. See, uh, when we talk about the integration of any particular system on the helicopter or, or an area platform, it simply just can't fit it and it can start, you can't just start trying. There are lot of other complexities of other systems which uh, come into play. So there are lots of iterations which are uh, carried out, there are lot of technical aspects which need to be studied prior to putting it. Subsequently, in an incremental manner, we fly and fly, test it at various uh, environmental conditions, conditions, various terrains. And like uh, we are unique in India that we have all kinds of terrains starting from sea level, the deserts, the mighty Himalayas. Yeah, so, so, and each system has its own limitations. But before I carry on, I must ask you, as commanding officer of this unit, just tell us a little bit about the buzz in your unit, about getting the opportunity of inducting this for the first time in the IA. Uh, as a commanding officer, I would say I'm proud to be the first commanding officer to be commanding a, a unit, uh, which is uh, the platform which is yeah. some, the platform which is uh, developed in India, yeah. as per Indian requirements. And, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to have this platform operationalized as early as possible. And you know, your squadron is obviously a family for you, right? It works like that team spirit. Uh, how has this really come together as a team for this big day of the actual induction? Uh, if you see, we started a process uh, three months back. And uh, if I compare uh, 
with my previous experience uh, what we have achieved as a team in last three months probably uh, in normal case would have been achieved over a period of one year right. so my team has actually come together and uh, we have been helped uh, at all levels in air force from the hl yeah. and uh, to make it uh, possible that in three months we are we have inducted the aircraft we are flying we are trained and we are capable of maintaining it so i feel very proud of my team and uh, uh, i think for any commanding officer if your team is there with you with full heart full support i think you can't ask for a better thing this one or two questions you spoke about composites um, a carbon composite technology is an area of excellence in india how does the use of uh, of composites actually help make this more reliable uh, make it lighter and stronger also right yeah. first of all composites if you see uh, the very concept of composite is that as compared to a metal or any other material it doesn't give away so easily it is easily repairable it is light in uh, in the weight which actually for a uh, aircraft or an uh, or a helicopter which operates at high altitude it's a very very significant requirement right and also in terms of its its uh, applicability like in rigid waters and all you can't make it if you don't have this kind of equipment and we've spoken uh, about high altitudes but this is equally adept at flying less than tree top height as well right in the desert where there are no trees as i told you this aircraft is highly maneuverable it it, it responds to the pilot input instantaneously and because of that you can fly it as low as possible in bad weather conditions uh, in 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 day and night and all kinds of terrain so it is beautiful in terms of uh, maneuverability well congratulations sir it's a red letter day for for your squadron and for you personally and uh, i'm sure this helicopter will do wonderfully well thank you very much indeed thank you sir well there you have it the commanding officer of this helicopter unit telling us a little bit about the lch uh, what its capabilities actually are and a little bit about the road ahead because in as much as this is a platform which has been developed over a period of time it's going to be progressively updated and upgraded so the capabilities of this light combat helicopter say 4 5 years down the road would be substantially more than what we see today but it's a huge start which has been made and a start which is going to get perhaps affirmed even more as these helicopters enter in large number well joining us now some of the young war fighters of the indian air force combat pilots who would actually take the light combat helicopter to war if required thanks very much uh, all of you for being with us tell us a little bit about atmanirbhata how it's not just rhetoric in the case of this helicopter it's actually something that's worked out uh, lch uh, is a shining example of self dependence in the defense sector so with the induction of this uh, lethal platform in our air force today as a nation we stand in the select group of seven countries who have shown their capability in developing designing and manufacturing uh, attack helicopters so this lethal machine is a potent platform and has proved all the uh, performance characteristics of an attack helicopter of our times yeah. uh, moreover the uh, technologies like the modern uh, mathematical models like computational fluid dynamics have been developed in house and perfected by our uh, on oem that is hl who has manufactured this uh, helicopter they have used composites in building most of the parts like airframe transmission and uh, armor protection right. also the rotor blades have been developed in house mm -hmm. so yes it is a huge leap in the uh, critical defense uh, development for our nation it's got rigid rotors right what what do rigid rotors do uh, basically rigid rotors make your uh, control responses uh, much faster so as the pilot is giving an input the responses come uh, very quickly the basically in uh, layman terms you can say the lag is very less or basically there is no lag right yeah uh, let's just talk about some of the the systems that you have over here you've got various pylons this is for air to air missiles and that's for rockets so again for uh, an audience which is which doesn't really know what are these rockets meant for these rockets are generally meant for a area target like right. a column of vehicle or even a lightly armored column of vehicle these are uh, they have a caliber of 70 mm they have right. a warhead which is of different types a different right. kind of warhead can be chosen depending upon the target that's called as target to weapon matching so based upon that we can configure the kind of uh, armament we want to deliver with the help of our in iada system which we have in this aircraft right. coming out of this pylon this is the pylon for uh, launching the air to air uh, missiles right so two of those missiles can be carried on to one pod and this pod can be replicated onto the other side so right. four in total the engine of course uh, it's co developed it's called the shakti variants of this engine actually do service on the advanced uh, light helicopter as well tell us about the engine how does it work well with this airframe 
as far as the design of the engine is concerned it is a very powerful engine uh, wherein it has been designed to match the uh, characteristics of the uh, transmission system and it gives us the option to uh, you know fly the machine at the highest peaks of the uh, himalayas so that is what it has been made uh, in the country itself to you know operate in the himalaya regions and operate at the highest peaks yeah so part of the part of the the helicopter is armor plated as well right could you tell us uh, what armor plating is meant to do because it's a trade off you know you were all explaining to me between weight of armor and uh, agility and light weight of the overall platform so tell us a little bit about how that works yeah. when engaging an enemy you cannot rule out to be uh, shot at yourself so basically when an enemy is engaging you with his small arms you need some kind of protection for your important system of the aircraft you have got transmission system which is this the rotor system and yeah. below part there are engines there are hydraulic system so all these crit systems are critical for the health of the aircraft right. and they need some kind of protection so the trading off which you were mentioning it is in respect of the adding the armor plates which are to the weight of the aircraft mm -hmm. but at the same time it is giving you the critical protection which you need while engaging the enemy right and you were telling me about the gun uh, a little while earlier on and the uh, the electro optical system and it's it's all slave to to the helmet of the pilot so again could you explain that to me how does that work yeah basically so this is our electro optical system right it has a tv uh, sensor a flare uh, that is a uh, forward looking infrared and a laser uh, range finder and tar right. target designator as well right and uh, basically we have the option to uh, slew the gun this is the 20 mm yeah. uh, gun uh, yeah. with the 400 rounds so we have the capability to slew the gun and the eo pod to our helmet mounted display right uh, so in a simple language uh, wherever i am looking my eo pod and the gun will be pointing in the same direction so it makes her uh, targeting easier for so us so you can actually be flying in one direction but targeting something in a slightly different direction yeah yeah that I, that is engaging it as well def yes that is yeah. what i mean yes. tell us a little bit about the buzz in the squadron uh you know the the fact that you've got this new platform your friends your family what did it what does it feel like in the run up to this event so as far as the buzz in the squadron is concerned it is like we uh, are uh, working day and night and still we are fresh and we are uh, excited and uh, you know we have that enthusiasm always there uh, so we are working towards operationalizing the platform at the earliest for that we have got pilots from different streams uh, so we have you know a varied experience in akiti that we are utilizing well so that is the kind That's of buzz is, is yeah, going on and, and uh, it is uh, definitely a proud uh, privilege for all of us to be a part of this elite group of the lch uh, trail blazers and uh, we are all honored to have been uh, chosen to shoulder this responsibility and uh, definitely it will be our uh, sincere endeavor to perform to the best of our uh, ability to operationalize uh, this uh, state of the art machine uh, the fleet to its full uh, capacity and capability at the earliest just one or two other questions it's a two uh, it's a tandem cockpit so the pilot is in front and the gunner in the back but the, the cockpits are replicated right yes. so both pilots are skilled to do both tasks right yes. primarily it is designed to be flown from the front cockpit the operator who sits in the front cockpit is termed as the pilot and the one who sits in the rear cockpit is termed as the weapon system operator so but as the eventuality may arise wherein the rear pilot may need to engage may need to fly and the front pilot may need to engage the targets hence with that point of view the controls have been replicated and not only the flying controls but also the controls to engage the armament right so both the pilots are completely fully capable and they are trained our uh, syllabus is also uh, constructed in such a way that we fly from both both the cockpits to have adequate experience and expertise in doing both the things yeah a final question to you yeah. and to you if you like uh, how what does it feel like to fly this well the aircraft the flying this aircraft it feels amazing it is a lean uh, mean machine and uh, the experience of flying this aircraft the feeling it is uh, absolutely unmatched uh, i've flown a few aircraft before this one but uh, none like this one but it's like a it's like a formula 1 racer compared to those oh, helicopters trust me it's uh, nothing like that it's uh, way better <laughs> okay, yeah. how about it's, you uh, the feel as a pilot piloting this this kind of aircraft is, is a easy, dream is it really difficult it's it's both at the same time right. <laughs> you can if we if you ask me it is easy for me but for a new incumbent it will be slightly difficult but it can always be mastered right. piloting this kind of aircraft is a dream come true for any combat aviator 
this aircraft has got the state of the art nav system and attack system which not only makes flying this aircraft as a privilege and a good kind of experience but at the same time and uh, delivering the armament becomes a exhilarating experience right thank you gentlemen very much for being with us well there you have it uh, some squadron pi pilots the real war fighters of the IAF talking about the light combat helicopter well joining us now are the flight commander of this helicopter unit um, Wing Commander Saurabh Sharma, thanks very much, uh, Wing Commander, for being with us. Um, you among the first uh, pilots to actually fly this in your squadron, or were you the, the first? I was uh, the second, right. after my commanding officer. Right. What does it feel like? What did it feel like? It's a pleasure to fly this machine, in the words of famous boxer Muhammad Ali. Flies yeah. like a butterfly, stings like a bee. Yeah. And you used to fly Mi-35s before, you used to fly other helicopters as well. Yes. Uh, tell us about this experience. Come. Okay, uh, this machine, as you must have figured it out from the name, light combat helicopter. Yeah. It's uh, about 5.8 tons of uh, war fighting machine, right. and uh, you must be aware that every rotor system and an engine system has a capability to lift some yeah. weight. Yeah. Now, if we have reduced the weight of this aircraft, this means I can carry more weapons. Right, right. So that translates to more firepower mm -hmm. up on the altitudes of. Uh, the 20,000 feet right, plus where right. is my battle zone in right. the northern parts yeah. also the lighter helicopter means that it will go faster right. for the battlefields of uh, Thar as yeah. well as the lighter helicopter means that it will turn tighter right. for the tight valleys of northeast right. so all the terrains all the expected battlefields in my AOR will be able to perform and deliver and the fact that uh, you've got a, a very powerful engine the Shakti engine uh, tell us a little bit about that how that works well for this airframe this uh, very healthy mating between the engine and the airframe. Uh, the engine is electronically governed. So that means I can have carefree handling of the aircraft. Yeah. And uh, I will not be bothered about my control inputs because the engine is automatically governed yeah. and all the control inputs will translate yeah. onto yeah. Yeah. Uh, into, the thing. into and maneuvers. Into maneuvers. And uh, it can actually carry a whole host of weaponry as well. So we've got air-to-air -air missiles, you've got rockets, but in the future you'll get uh, guided missiles uh, for surface targets as well. Yes, we will get air-to-surface missiles also. The, and, uh, yeah. trying, uh, the trial phase is almost over and uh, very shortly they'll be integrated onto this platform and giving it the teeth which are required to take out any enemy anywhere. What did it feel like when you first found out that you're going to actually be associated with the actual induction? It's a matter of pride for me and also a responsibility on our shoulders, the first lot of us, the trailblazers, to set the ball rolling in the right direction. It's indeed a matter of pride and uh, it's, it's indeed a very, uh, it's a very surreal moment for us. Yeah. It was a very surreal moment when we came to know that we are going to be the first ones to yeah. fly this machine and operationalize this machine. Yeah. Um, and what about um, the actual training because it's a new type? Um, how did you actually train for a new machine? Uh, the OEM of this uh, aircraft, uh, Hindustan Aeronautical Limited, uh, they were the ones who trained us on these machines. Plus, we uh, all had been selected because of our previous backgrounds in attack helicopters, tandem seatings, mm -hmm. and uh, the light helicopter background uh, pilots who already had some experience in flying similar machines. That came in handy. Uh, the Air Force training policies which were in vogue for training pilots like us, that also came in handy for us to be selected and then to be trained onto this machine. Yeah. And um, this is going to be progressively upgraded. It's been actually built with um, data buses and architecture to sustain constant upgrades. Yes, yes. So the machine 10 years later will be very differently capable from what it is now, perhaps much more capable. Certainly that will be. Uh, the beauty of indigenization is that you have the source code with you and you will be able to integrate any weapon, any contemporary weapon of that time or this time available with you onto this machine and have it with the latest set of weapons ready to go into any battlefield. Right. And, uh, you know, have you flown this at high altitudes yourself? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, but I think in as much as we speak about high altitudes, it's equally capable at very low altitudes, this treetop heights. So it's versatile in, its, uh, in, in the roles. That, could you tell us a little bit about how, um, you know, it's very versatile in the roles that it has? Okay. Uh, this machine. Uh, it caters to the specific requirements that we, Indian Air Force, had for uh, an attack helicopter. The gap, the critical gap that we had in that light helicopter class, it has been bridged by this machine. Maneuverability wise, 
weight carriage capability at all the altitudes speed wise the sensors the data linking everything available uh, whichever is uh, on your wish list is available in this aircraft all right well congratulations and thank you so much well there you have it from one of the the pilots over here um, you know he he's somebody who is a key part of this helicopter unit and they'll be part of the team that actually ensures that the lessons they learn are learned by successive teams or squadrons of the indian air force in operating this weapon system